it's great to be here. Uh, first of hopefully many presentations in 2022. Um, so today, um, I suppose on behalf of uh, the team, uh, which includes uh, Mark and Mairead, um, I'm going to talk to you about a systematic review of student readiness literature um, that we conducted, which focused on research um, conducted in the context of uh, COVID-19. And there's, I suppose, three things I want to cover in this presentation. Uh, first, I want to outline the background to the study, why we decided to undertake the literature, and I'll talk you through our methodology and the different search parameters that we employed. Um, and then I'll finish up by sharing some of our um, preliminary findings. Before we end with that, though, I just want to acknowledge that this research um, was conducted as part of the Erasmus Plus. Digital Pro Strategic Partnership, uh, which is being led out by DASHU. Um, and I suppose this project is a response to the COVID-19 crisis and focuses on professional development for digital teaching and learning. And, but it also looks at student readiness and for digital learning. And I suppose that's an important part of the equation and the part that we're going to look at today. Um, very quickly, here's a quick overview of our seven partners. Uh, who are all well known throughout Europe for their research and innovation in digital education. Um, so for the for the study itself, we're all now well, well aware um, in 2020, millions, if not billions of learners uh, were introduced to um, maybe not online learning, but definitely emergency remote teaching for the first time. Um, and this tradition, this transition was definitely a challenge. Um, for all, uh, both teachers and students, um, and students needed just as much support as the teachers. Um, and one initiative in DCU to support students during this time uh, was the development of the MOOC at Digital Edge Essentials for the Online Learner. And this was developed in collaboration with the Irish Universities Association, and Sharon Flynn, I see, is here, um, and um, DCU Students' Union. Um, the course was hosted on the FutureLearn platform, um, and it was developed to um, help students um, get the skills that they would need to get the most out of their online, digital or hybrid university learning. Um, and it launched originally in September 2020 um, and has now had three facilitated iterations, um, but also continues to be available as a self-paced or self-directed resource. Um, and to date, we've had over 10,000 learners uh, enroll in the course. And we have um, a really high completion rate of 50%, especially in the in the MOOC context. And um, just very quickly, um, here's a quick overview of the structure of the course for any of you who might not be familiar with it. Um, it's structured around four main themes, uh, ways of thinking, ways of working, tools for working, and to, tools for thriving. And it's also anchored in the life comp framework and the OECD, e, uh, OECD learning compass. So the instructional approach is strongly influenced by the design principles that underlie the FutureLearn platform, um, which include visual learning, learning through conversation, and storytelling. Um, so they feature prominently. Um, importantly, a central ethos of the course is that it is for learners by learners. Um, we had experienced online learners um, involved in all stages of design, development, and delivery of the course. So um, students contributed content from the get from the outset in the form of um, audio and written testimonials of their own experiences and challenges of online learning. And they reviewed the content. And we also then at the in, in when we went to facilitation stage, had a team of student ambassadors uh, co-facilitate the course alongside academics. Um, and they really brought a unique student perspective to answering questions and sharing experiences. And I think it really helped uh, a lot of the students um, who are taking the course open up and share also their, their um, experiences. We uh, also use the course as an opportunity to get more insight into the student experience. Um, with polls such as this one, uh, which were interwoven into the content. Um, they also um, became a form of emotion regulation for the learners. Um, they commented in the comments that they felt that they that they felt better about how they felt when they could see that other people were feeling the same way that they were. Um, 
So um, a great form of uh, emotion regulation there. And uh, we also had some qualitative feedback um, and this combined insight really brought to our attention the lack of confidence and stress and anxiety that learners were feeling prior to taking the course. And it really highlighted the importance of hearing their voice um, and understanding their experience for us. And this really raised the question, well, what was happening elsewhere? How were other universities um, engaging with uh, these student concerns? Um, and this is essentially why we decided to conduct uh, the literature review. So um, I suppose now we'll just take a quick look at what we did. Um, as I'm sure you're all aware, there is a mountain of literature published in the COVID era. Um, this particular publication um, reports on the development of a database of COVID-19 related research in the higher education sector. Um, and it has identified, I think, it, um, and it's not even fully finished, uh, over se uh, 700 publications. So there's really a lot coming through in this space. Um, in terms of student readiness, um, this article from the American Journal of Distance Education um, and this one here as well were published pre-COVID and they show us that we knew a lot about student readiness long before the COVID era, but we, what we wanted to know is were there any changes in our understanding of the concept as a result of the unique challenges brought about by the pandemic um, and the, the kind of quick pivot to the to the online environment. In terms of our study, um, we set out the, the following three research questions. Um, so we wanted to know what research has been published uh, reporting on student readiness uh, for online distance learning during the COVID crisis. How strong was the learner voice in that literature? And what lessons could we take um, from the literature that could be used for new models of digital education? Um, in terms of methodology, we searched um, the Scopus and Web of Science databases, and we also crowdsourced uh, recommendations from our project partners um, in the Digital Pro uh, partnership. Uh, we employed some strict inclusion and exclusion criteria, um, which kind of primarily focused on empirical papers um, and obviously the student perspective, um, as some people were also looking at teacher readiness, but we, we solely um, focused on student readiness um, for this particular uh, paper. Um, we developed two uh, different search strings um, in order to account for the different phrasing combinations. Um, and these were sort of used uh, across the two databases. Um, and then following a three phase screening process, we landed on 43 publications, which, re which really isn't a lot, um, given the fact that um, the previous paper I spoke about had identified over 700 um, during this period in the higher education sector. Um, so an interesting result that in itself. Um, I suppose um, in, from the descriptive analysis of these publications is that they come from all over the world um, with a really strong focus on developing countries um, and in particular universities that are new to online learning who have not previously engaged with this space. Um, so that, that is, a, is a point to note, especially as we look towards the findings. Um, so for our um, pre uh, preliminary findings at the moment, we're still in the process of, of conducting a more thorough analysis, but some of the important points that have come out so far include that there are very little evidence that the concept of student readiness has informed our response to COVID-19. Um, Many authors, as I mentioned, were new to the field of online learning and they really weren't engaging with the wider literature or pre-existing literature. Um, they hadn't kind of used recent conceptualizations of digital readiness, um, which looked at not only hard and soft skills, but also not only hard skills and, and, and devices, but also soft skills and uh, self-efficacy and confidence levels in the students themselves and how they felt um, they were ready. Um, and, and many of the studies were focusing primarily on access to devices and internet access, which is obviously part of the equation, but it's not the whole picture. Um, there was also a lack of student voice in the research. It was predominantly quantitative survey research. Um, many of the authors had developed new scales 
um, like I said, that focused on access to devices and internet as opposed to um, other more soft skills um, and effective measures. Um, and those who used pre-existing skills did not make adaptions for the COVID-19 context. Um, so there, there was really no uh, unique element to, to the studies. Um, I suppose this lack of students' own words and their opportunity to tell their experience in their own words is an important gap here that we need to fill, not only um, in the research, but also in practice and in course development. Um, and in, I suppose, following on from that, here's an example of one publication. And it's now it's not in the area of um, student readiness, but it is a response to COVID. Um, and in this paper, students were research partners um, and they co-wrote the article alongside the academic. Um, and I really feel like this is a great example of where we could take student readiness research uh, and publications to really um, share that student perspective. Um, also, this is um, really interesting and in many ways imaginative project from the IUA. Um, they ran a social media campaign, which I'm sure a lot of you have engaged with, um, which crowdsourced uh, student views on their COVID experience and how they wanted their education to look like. Um, and it really was um, a great and a, and a new way of capturing the student voice um, and one which I think we can use um, in other contexts going forward. So to very quickly uh, finish up, um, so my main point is that I'm sure this is nothing you have not heard before, um, but it, in many ways it does seem to be new as it's not reflected in, in the literature. And it's important that right throughout the design process, the student voice and their readiness needs are brought to the fore of our considerations and the decision making process when we go about um, designing and um, implementing uh, online courses. So that's just a point I want to, to leave you on. And there's obviously many ways that this can be done, um, but it really isn't being reflected at the moment in, in, in the literature from, from what we've looked at. Um, so thank you very much.